Ken Ham has been trumpeting the release of a new DVD, The Great Ice Age. Ken Ham's position is that the Bible is literally true and the Earth is around 6,000 years old, with a global flood happening around 4,300 years ago. God commanded Noah to save all the animals, a representative pair, or kind, at least, of all the animals which had ever lived were taken on board the ark. And as this DVD explains, and is detailed on Ken's website, after the flood came the Ice Age. So let us consider just one of those kinds that were on the ark. Proboscidea is the genetic order which includes elephants, mammoths and mastodons. Ken Ham will tell you that there are over 500 species within the Proboscidea order and will go on to tell you that only one pair of the order were required on the ark to repopulate the earth with all the other Proboscidea species after the flood. So what about the Ice Age? Ken will tell you that there was only a single Ice Age and this came straight after the flood. The Ice Age took about 700 years to form. It didn't hang around but immediately began to thaw and was gone in another couple of hundred years. In biblical time, that means that the Ice Age lasted from about 2300 BCE to around 1300 BCE. Ken also readily acknowledges that millions of mammoths and mastodons roamed the Earth during the Ice Age and that they died out at the end of the Ice Age. So how do we get from two proboscidea walking off the Ark to the 10 million mammoths buried in the Siberian permafrost alone. Evolution is not an option. It never happened. Ken does not explain how we get to the many species of proboscidea we know about, how mammoths and mastodons grew out of this elephant kind, but I'm going to ignore all of that because something is coming. Now, Ken tries to explain how we get from two mammoths to the 10 million that are buried in the Siberian permafrost. A mammoth population could double every 25 years, as occurs amongst protected elephants in Hoangi National Park in Africa, which would mean that a pair of mammoths could produce 8.5 million mammoths after 550 years. And it looks good on a graph. But this is where we come to Ken's elephant in the room. You see, to get to his 8.5 million mammoths after 550 years, Ken Ham used the population growth rate for elephants, which sounds reasonable. That is his assumption that two elephants would produce 8.5 million elephants after 550 years. Because whatever Ken supports for the mammoth, he must support for the elephants because it is the elephant population growth upon which Ken's entire mammoth population hypothesis is founded. But of course the elephants did not suffer as a result of the end of the Ice Age, as the mammoths did, so their population just went on growing. Now as far as we know, Alexander the Great was the first European to discover the Indian elephant, about 2,000 years after the date of the Biblical Flood. Ken's mammoth population doubling every 25 years would give him the few million mammoths he needed in Siberia, but what would it give Alexander the Great in India? Well, Alexander should have found two and a half sextillion elephants in India. That's two with 24 zeros after it. Now, it's estimated that there are 10 to the 21 grains of sand on all the beaches of the world. What about when Europeans began seriously exploring Africa 2,000 years later than Alexander? Well, then there would be nearly three septillion elephants in Africa. That's two with 48 zeros after it. The answer why these are numbers of elephants weren't found is, of course, that AIG's calculations are nonsense. They pick a number that will fit the answer they want work backwards and ignore any details which prove their facts to be nonsense. Confident that those who want to believe will not even bother to take the time to think about what they're being spoon-fed. Well, I do ask you to think and ask the difficult questions. If you start by assuming that you know the answer, you're unlikely ever to ask the right questions. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. Thank you for watching.